We had another commitment uh, on the day, so we have uh, Dr. Andratschke giving the talk. Thank you very much, Wolf. And recently I found out that I would need to jump in, and it's a great honor for me to speak to this audience and with those uh, great talks and great speakers just before me. And right now I would like to highlight some issues about radiotherapy as a possible immune response modifier. And first of all, I cannot help but discuss a little bit of radiation biology. So in principle, everything, uh, all interaction or all damage that is conferred by radiotherapy uh, directly to this tumor cell can be characterized by the classical five R's uh, in radiation biology. So it's the DNA repair, the repopulation, the redistribution within the cell cycle in between of the radiation fraction and the reoxygenation, and as a standalone feature, it's intrinsic radiosensitivity. On the one hand, some of those phenomena counter effect uh, the effects of radiotherapy. On the other hand, some of these effects can enhance uh, radiotherapy, and that's one of the reasons why we do fractionated treatment, or still do fractionated treatment in most of the tumors. Uh, primarily in the definitive and curative setting. But on the other hand, with increasing knowledge um, in uh, immunotherapy, maybe we have to consider additional R's, because with these R's, the original goal of radiotherapy is always to increase local tumor control, and this by specifically interacting directly uh, with the tumor cell. So the radiation directly interacts with the tumor cell. On the other hand, Maybe we need to consider a sixth R, and I would like to uh, bluntly call it remote response. And the first would be just to look at the local effect on the uh, tumor microenvironment, uh, which uh, is the immune mediated cell death. And there's one group that has done this experiment in nude mice. They implanted uh, a tumor cell line that's very resistant to radiotherapy. And in those nude mice, if, it, if they just irradiated uh, um, the, 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 the tumor or looked at sham irradiated controls, they realized that there's virtually no effect of radiotherapy on the tumor growth delay. On the other hand, if they did the same experiments within wild type mice, so mice that are not immunocompromised, suddenly they realized that the same tumor cell line that's originally very radio resistant uh, confers, uh, uh, that radiation confers a tumor growth delay, uh, indicating that somehow the susceptibility of these, uh, these uh, tumor cells to radiation changed. And in a third set of experiments, um, if they introduced in uh, an alpha, an anti CD8 antibody, partly abrogating CD8 uh, lymphocyte response, they could restore or abrogate some of uh, the radiation effect seen in the wild type mice. So this is on the local scale, not directly interacting radiation with, tum with the tumor cell, but indirectly conferring uh, cell death or uh, cytotoxic effect via, via um, immune mediation. Another question that always pops up, and I would call it remote response as well, is the so-called upscope effect, which uh, in the clinic, well, I will show you a, a case later on, but it's something that has been described uh, already in the 50s, but it's really rarely observed in the clinic. But I just selected one set of experiments. This is just a picture taken from the DiMaria paper because it nicely depicts uh, how these experiments work. Two tumors are implanted, but only one is irradiated. And this group specifically uh, looked uh, at a similar um, model um, similar to uh, the DiMaria group, also using an FLT3 ligand, uh, which promotes activation of dendritic cells. But the interesting point is that, of course, radiation exerts an effect on the locally irradiated tumor, that the FLT3 ligand has not a real pronounced effect. But looking at uh, the non-irradiated tumor, an upscopal effect, or at least a tumor growth delay, has been observed. And 
uh, more importantly, this uh, tumor, this upscopal tumor effect was independent on a, uh, of a humoral tumor response, but really cell-mediated. So there is in vitro evidence, but right now uh, not fully replicated in the clinic if we look at radiation alone. Now, coming back um, to the effect of radiation on the tumor microenvironment again, if we think of how radiation works and we have uh, radiation given locally and we have the effects on the DNA levels so or direct interaction and damage to the DNA, but on the other hand we have a plethora of um, damage, danger or inflammatory signals that are released besides interference with the signaling cascade at the membrane level and all these besides a direct cytotoxic effect of radiation can exert uh, signals or induce cascades that attract uh, the different um, um, immune cells like lymphocytes, monocytes, macrophages and uh, myelite-derived myelite cells. We have talked a lot about this, that if we have a cytotoxic effect where tumor cells are dying and are releasing those signals and even are releasing a plethora of um, antigens which then might be um, taken by the dendritic cells or by activated dendritic cells and uh, presented to uh, the respective T lymphocytes which are then primed against those tumor cells and may home back to the tumor. We have stimulatory signals in this environment, but we also have immunosuppressive signals. And concerning the effect of radiotherapy, if those stimulatory signals overweight the inhibitory signals, we may have a positive effect on the local tumor environment on the tumor itself, but it may not be sufficient for true uh, tumor rejection by uh, the immune cells itself or even mediated upscopally to different non-irradiated tumor cells. So maybe the optimal effect is to be expected really by the combination uh, of radiotherapy with systemically given drugs uh, uh, that reverse this immunosuppressive environment that may be present in the irradiated uh, microenvironment. And I just wanted to highlight a few uh, experiments. This is a, a mouse glioma model where, mouse, uh, where glioma was implanted locally in the brain. It was only locally uh, irradiated with a stereotactic technique. And what this group uh, saw was that irradiation or an anti-PD-1 antibody, both can increase uh, the count of CD8 effector cells, but both given in combination significantly boosted this reaction. On the other hand, uh, the combination had the, uh, the strongest impact on, uh, on inhibiting uh, T regulatory T cells. And this translated in a prolonged survival uh, experiment in animals that were treated with the combination. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we, uh, we, w we want to not only to know whether the local effect uh, can be increased, but also what is about this scopal effect. This is another group which did uh, an experiment with two implanted tumor. They used different fractionation schedules, single fraction, multiple fractions. They looked at the irradiated tumors in combination uh, with a checkpoint inhibition, and what they saw, of course, was uh, a strong local effect of the radiotherapy on the irradiated tumor, but here you can see the, um, the control group um, with no irradiation, and here you can see the group with uh, five times six or three times eight gray irradiation in combination with the, uh, with the checkpoint inhibition, and on the non-irradiated tumor, there was quite an impressive uh, um, growth delay um, mediated by the combination of the treatment. And finally, again um, uh, from the, the Tseng study, uh, it's not only about the local effect and uh, the upscopal effect, but maybe there's something more, that there's really something like a re-challenge immunity and what they did in their animal model uh, after they've treated the, ani the, the, the animals with the combination and the surviving animals uh, were implanted uh, with um, 
with the tumor cells, with the glioma cells in the flank, and that the so-called cured mice, that the flank re-challenge resulted in uh, virtually no tumor growth, showing some long-term immunity in these animals. But it's not always about um, the checkpoint inhibition or the monoclonal antibodies. If we combine it with radiotherapy, there have been different approaches with different uh, targets or different um, techniques or technologies be used uh, preclinically, all either targeting the primer or the effector phase and somehow uh, looking at the local or scopal effect, but the ultimate, ultimate goal should be durable immune response. Now, if we know that radiotherapy may have this effect, uh, what about dose and fractionation? So what's the optimal, uh, um, the optimal timing and the optimal dose and fractionation? How should radiotherapy be given? So looking at all the experiments, optimal radiotherapy up to now is, or the optimal schedule is not known. For logistic reasons in the beginning, single fractions have been used because it's easier and there have been some reports where 1 times 15 uh, exerted a more pronounced effect than compared to 5 times 3, but we need to be aware that radiobiologically 5 times 3 is not comparable to 1 times 15. So we cannot conclude from those experiments that a single fraction is more effective. And there are some experiments where high single fractions even have a negative effect if we look at the regulatory um, T cells. And again, showing this slide from the, Dima, uh, from, from the Duan paper, the fractionated approach was much more effective than the single fraction approach they used, not shown here on the graph, and maybe there's some dose response giving hyperfractionated uh, radiotherapy to a higher single and cumulative dose. But to me sometimes more pressing is the question, when do we have to give radi radiotherapy or when should we give immunotherapy? So the first thing is the timing and the time frame within both therapies have, been, have to be combined. Do we start with radiotherapy beforehand, then give, uh, give immunotherapy within uh, a time frame X? So right now uh, the jury is out, but uh, the preliminary evidence suggests that it should be somehow simultaneously within uh, a time frame of days and weeks. But I think we also should address another question, how to deposit the different fractions. So should we give the fractions on consecutive days, either hyperfractionated within one or two weeks or with regular fractionation over several weeks, or should we have some breaks, real breaks within the fraction? So for example, giving it just once a week. And for the daily fractionation over several weeks, I'm very skeptical because uh, the radiation dose we're giving there is enough to abrogate the local uh, uh, immune response or to, 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 to has a significant cytotoxic effect on T lymphocytes. So right now what uh, most groups are favoring are short course radiotherapies, either as a SBRT, stereotactic treatment within one week or even separated by longer um, periods of time. But right now we don't know what's optimal. Now, of course, uh, I need to present a clinical case of uh, upscopal effect, and I'm not presenting the melanoma case from the New England Journal. I'm not presenting the Di uh, Maria case, of course. I'm presenting the Zurich case. Uh, it's not as spectacular as the melanoma paper, but still as a patient with a stage four non-small cell lung cancer, has a systemic recurrence. These were abdominal lymph nodes. And <clears throat> He received palliative chemotherapy, but uh, due to side effects uh, on, on, uh, on this treatment, uh, there was a switch to nivolumab. And if we look, so this was in um, May 2015, and looking only here at this lesion, we had a mixed response. So there was one lesion that was responding, but we had three new lesions, and we continued this patient on nivolumab, and uh, Alessandra, you should be aware of this case, and one of my colleagues, Oliver Riester, then took uh, over as a radiation oncologist and only treated 
those two lymph nodes and we decided also for reasons of the field sites and also for reasons of unknown toxicity of the combination to leave this as an index lesion and several months later all three lesions, even the non irradiated lesion was gone. Unfortunately we had to stop um, nivolumab due to grade 3 radi uh, pancreatitis, but still the patient was in complete remission after SBRT treatment and uh, at least continued uh, nivolumab until then. So we have anecdotal evidence, but what about real evidence, clinical evidence from, from some trials? And we have uh, some uh, high-ranked uh, proof of principle trials. One is in solid uh, metastasized cancer with the use of GCSF. Uh, which uh, activates dendritic cells and by itself has no significant anti-tumor effect and this was a quite interesting approach. Metastasized tumors uh, were chosen, two lesions were chosen as target lesions for treatment. Uh, the first lesion, they, they were treated separately, so the first lesion was treated, then GCSF was given over two weeks and then with the two weeks um, break in between the radiation, the second lesion has been treated. The idea was to somehow boost again and use a different lesion, maybe releasing a different set of antigens. And uh, it's quite interesting to see uh, that the combination, the patient that were treated with the combination, one third showed um, upscopal responses. So at least uh, first hints that this might work. Obviously, I think the re reviewers did not realize that this graph was, it should be the other way around. So these plots should be down here and those patients should be here. Uh, I realized that by reviewing the paper. Uh, but interestingly, patients with the abscope effect had a mean median survival of 21 months and patients uh, not responding only of eight months. In another very interesting paper with 22 melanoma cases, one single uh, lesion was treated uh, with a different fractionation schedules, only either two or three fractions with six to eight grade, depending on where it has, uh, where the metastasis was sitting, so either lung or liver, there were different schedules used also for toxicity reasons. Here the abscopal effect was also observed in almost or in almost over than one third of the patients, showing that uh, with an approach, uh, with an anti CTL4 approach, uh, there may be upscopic effects induced. And this paper also uh, investigated in, in preclinical studies whether this effect could be enhanced by double uh, checkpoint uh, blockade. On the other hand, we have this prostate cancer study on patients progressing on docetaxel, so metastasis patients progressing on docetaxel. They were randomized uh, to get eight grade to a single bone lesion and then to get adjuvant epilimumab or placebo. And what we see here, that there is no difference in the overall survival in the overall group, but if those patients uh, had been afterwards, there was a post hoc uh, uh, analysis, if only the good prognosis pace, uh, patients uh, were plotted, um, those of the good prognosis patients who had received epilimumab had a far superior over survival. Good prognosis uh, was either uh, caline phosphatase uh, less than 1.5 elevated, uh, the hemoglobin up above 11 and no visceral metastasis. So overall a negative trial but with a subgroup analysis that's worth uh, for further investigation. There are a lot of retrospective studies published which uh, may be hypothesis generating. There are a lot of studies going on phase one, phase two and it's interesting to see that these are mostly phase one, two studies incorporating stereotactic radiotherapy and they are really based on a paradigm shift uh, for stage four disease so that we have, can really have a different look at the stage of oligometastasis, oligoprogression or polyprogression. I have specifically not touched um, the primary situation combining curative radiotherapy with uh, immune uh, checkpoint inhibition. There, the data is too preliminary to really get uh, to really get a clear picture. So to wrap it up, uh, if we irradiate um, 
uh, the tumor environment, we release chemotactic signals that facilitate immune cell infiltration, immune activation, and on the other hand, recruitment of immunosuppressive signals. All in all, it's the hypothesis of a radiogenic vaccination by induction of cell death and a flush of tumor antigens. Uh, we may be able to reverse the host and the tumor response by immune silencing by specific uh, drugs or uh, targets, but also beyond the local efficacy, uh, the major focus right now is on the upscopal effect and hopefully on the durable uh, long-term immune response. Early, the early clinical data is promising, but we definitely need to wait for real prospective clinical data to acknowledge the true potential. Thank you very much.